Hey, welcome to Pie Tales. I'm your host, Lloyd, and we got a special guest. As usual, I got a homie, Jakari. Jakari, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Hey, how y'all doing? You That's your camera right there. This tea is good. <laughs> this tea is pretty good, huh? Oh, so what, just like a full? Um, yeah, I mean, what, what you doing right now? What's okay. going on? Well, Jakari Lister, Houston, Texas, you know what I'm saying? Paraland by way, you know, Houston, well, whatever. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. 518, 518. Yeah, 518. <laughs> um, currently in uh, grad school, I'm a filmmaker, getting my um, my master's in film or whatever, enjoying the process, living life, and um, learning a lot, pretty much every day, learning something new. And um, yeah, bro, like, what's what I'm looking for? I'm in this like stage where I'm like putting together like my pieces and like my style and like um, how I approach telling stories. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's and, very important as a filmmaker. Yeah, it's funny. It's like this overarching theme of like my life in terms of like storytelling. As far as like what I've been learning in school and then like learning in life, yeah. like walking through life, it's really cool. Like when you like take a step back and like think about what it is that you're doing, you know? That's just me. Okay, well, yeah, we're going to get into that uh, during the show. But right now, tell the, tell the people, you know, what we got for dessert today. So, I'm a simple man, as you know. Yeah. Not too simple, simple enough. I like apple pie, so we got apple pie here. Okay. And it does look good, so I'm gonna go ahead. Oh yeah, take that first bite. Let the people know how it is. I had to get some ice cream with mine. Uh, I just feel like with cobbler and apple pie and all that stuff, ice cream, you know, goes pretty well with it. So yeah. How, how you thinking? How you feeling? You can give an honest review. I didn't make this. Where this come from? This is good. Hmm. You got the biggest piece. I knew you knew it was good. <laughs> Uh, no, nah, I didn't do that on purpose, but no, nah, with the ice cream, it is definitely it. This, this is nice. No, nah, I am not mad. I bet I probably shouldn't shout them out because they didn't sponsor this and I have to go pay for it. But, uh, how surprised they they hooked us up. Mm. Shout out to them. That's why, how, how, like, when I make it, I just want people to send me desserts all the time. Well, let me tell you, they're gonna see me soon. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Well, yeah, nah, I need to show this to them uh, next time I pull up. But uh, anyway, you can continue to eat your pie as we talk, or for sure now. But uh, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Let, let's let's try this. I haven't done it in a while. Do you remember the? the do you remember meeting me and so we met in high school? Go we'll back to it. Dawson High School. Dawson High School. Yes, um, we played football together. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. How was football for you? Football. Yeah, <laughs> you knew exactly what that. <laughs> football was a um, football was a passion for a time. Mm -hmm. So I started playing football at age nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad said I had to get tough. And that, that, was, that was his words. That was his answer. Yes, that was his words. Okay. So he took me to the southwest side. All right. Um, down in A Leaf, and he had me playing with them them cats over there. Yeah. That was probably one of the one of if not. That, that was probably the most fun I had playing football, because he was coaching too, my yeah, dad. That helps. But um, you know, can't, it was just, help. <laughs> it was a good time. I learned a lot. Um, had a bully on the team, you know what I'm saying? All the corny stuff, <laughs> corny classic movie stuff. Yeah. Um, I learned a lot about uh, the sport, you know, and really like not quitting and stuff like that. For sure. Because I don't know, it was really just like a real formative time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we ended up finding the team in Pearland because it was much closer, of course. And by that point, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm big and tough. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, what's that with it? So, um, Little League then was just whatever. Had a lot more fun with it as I got older, up until we got to, like, junior high. And then I was like, dang. What was that realization? <laughs> Man, when I got to junior high, what was that? That was Barry Miller, right? Yep. That was, um, it was very competitive. And I enjoyed the competitiveness of it. You know, it's football. You're playing a sport. Yeah, yeah. Then when, once we got to Dawson, it was like, okay, cool. It's like 200 dudes on this team. Who playing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, that was the worst part about it, I think. Because, um, what, what was that? I was on B team freshman year. Mm -hmm. Or was it B team sophomore year? It was one of, them, one of them years I was on B team. Yeah. And that was, that was easy. I was like, oh, this is crazy. Like, y'all suck. <laughs> you know? 
And I'm not saying I'm, I'm the GOAT. I was the greatest ever, but I was I was having a good time back then. You know, there was a clear difference between 18, V team, JV, varsity. Every level had its differences. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you, I, I don't know what was going on with the 18, V team, boy. We used to have a good time. <laughs> we used to be on the bus kicking, chilling. I was like, yo, this is, this is what sophistication is. <laughs> Yeah, so you are a year younger than me, but we did play varsity at the same time. Mm -hmm. Good times, good times. Uh, so yeah, that was football while you were playing football. Um, you were also doing like ETV and like film production stuff kind of around that time. So what, what got you into that? Or what sparked that interest, I guess, if you remember? Uh, eighth grade, we had an AV class and there was this woman, I forgot her name, she was an awful teacher. <laughs> um, she had us like playing around with these little handheld camcorders. Oh, really? They were like um, vertical. They weren't even like sideways cameras. Back when the max resolution was 720p. Yeah, did we have a, a show for Barry Miller? Like a no. like an ATV mm -mm, They had it back then. Oh, okay. It was just this woman. I forgot her name. And um, I remember one day we was doing these projects and I couldn't finish mine for whatever reason. I started yeah. crying. I was like, dang. Like tears? Oh yeah, I was passionate yeah. about my project. You know what I'm saying? Even though it didn't come together. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, big imaginations. I find that people with big imaginations tend to be, like, real passionate about what they do. Yeah, artists, and I'm serious about my... Oh, yeah. My stuff. So, um, that w that's what got me into, like, playing with cameras and all that other kind of stuff. And so, in school? Yeah, in school. Nice. So, then I got to uh, Dawson freshman year. We had another AV class. That was fun. Yeah. That was stupid fun. That was when I learned Premiere and all that. And that stuff has stuck with me since then. So, that, what was that, like? I was like 14 going on 15 then, yeah. yeah. So that was tight. Um, what else? ETV didn't come to my junior year. So that was when you saw it then, for sure. Okay. Because I took a year off, sophomore year from AV. And then I got into ETV, like the, it was like a, a, a pre-class for it or something. Yeah. ETV two or one. Yeah, I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like the just general, Audiovisual class or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but we got to collaborate with the ETV. So mm -hmm. for those who don't know, ETV was like the school news for us. Mm -hmm. So every Friday we had this like news show that would come on, and um, you know we would get on there. Me and my friends, we we, we brought the fun to it. At least we tried to. So we had like the skits on there, the nerd stuff, the game show. You know, like talking about video games, like trying that kind of thing. You know, trying to spice it up. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. It was it was entertaining. Um, like little news network. I mean, as little, you know, little teenage high school kids. And yeah, y'all had like your little little clique, right? The whole ETV was seemed like y'all were y'all all worked together. That was nice to one, see. One way or another. Yeah. Yeah. We had so much stuff get rejected. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Yeah. Man, we would have we had some of the goofiest stuff. It's cussing around. You no, know, oh, man, sure, man. Do, do what you got to do. We had some of the goofiest shit we ever made in ETV. Because, you know, we were at school. We're like, bro, school sucks. <laughs> Let's make something funny. Because we knew that everybody else was in class bored. I remember we did this one. Ooh, it was by the skin of our teeth. Mm -hmm. It's called Kunkari. Okay. And I was like, that one got on there. I don't know if you remember that. I was like doing this like kung fu stuff. I ain't no kung fu. <laughs> But we we had we watched all the du the stupid kung fu movies, so we had all these different shots. It was funny. Yes, sir. I brought like the jean jacket, the jean vest jacket. That's what it was. It was a yeah, jean yeah, jacket yeah, yeah. vest. Yeah, that was tight. That was funny. <laughs> mm. This pie is kicking, bro. No, no, that pie is actually pretty pretty good. You know, that's that's why we do it here at Pie Tales. You know, mm -hmm. good desserts, great desserts. We got our little pie tail mugs that we sipping out of, sipping this good whatever kind of tea it is. Uh, you know, talking about life and stuff. So yeah. So, uh, needless to say, I feel like uh, filming and all that was a success for you in high school because you were like, I'm going to pursue this in college. I'm going to go to college like, with right. the intention of pursuing film. So, you know, what were those, those initial thoughts and how was that transition? So, I ended up going to Dilly University for film in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. How I got there was crazy because I applied to like 13 schools. I got into 11 of them. But, um, you know... You need that bread to go to school. You do need some money, yeah. So Dillard offered me a full ride. Um, went to this like meeting thing they had, talked to me, I asked about a scholarship and they had it. I applied for it. I was the only person within the arts who even applied. That's why they tell you to like go out and apply for stuff, whether it be a job or a scholarship. You just gotta put your name out there sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. God willing, it comes to you. And that's what that's what happened. Right. They did. Um 
but yeah, film out there was crazy. Like, it really opened me up to what it takes to make a film. Mm -hmm. But undergrad didn't tell me how to make how to tell a story for real. So a lot of that was left up to me, and in some ways to my detriment because. Yeah, I know what a grip does. I know what the gaffers do. I know what the PAs do. I know what the assistant director does. Okay. But the story sucks for everything that I'm making at the time. Okay, okay. So it's like... You can put a team together. I can put a team together. <laughs> but like, We don't have a clear objective. Okay. You know? All right. But it wasn't until like my junior, senior year that I really like got a hold of what it is I wanted to do. And my stuff started to look, it started to come together. Okay. Because I was out there shooting parties and events and doing photography. If you make film, don't do photography unless you're really like passionate about photos, because it's like trying to serve two masters. In my opinion, I guess I can see that for me. I can see that because you know you're trying to shoot a movie, but you got a photo shoot over here. But then you got another photo shoot because you want to get that money, but you still want to tell your story. But you need more time to tell your story than it takes for you to get that money. You know, do yeah, it that with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely two separate things. Like people try to get me to do photography right now, and I keep like kind of rejecting them because I mean I'm not really a photographer. Like, mm -hmm. and, I'm not claiming that, but I mean, next year, if they paying, I might have to pull up. <laughs> but if you make it work, or even for a time being, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Of course. You know, it gave me my little fart around money, gas money. Mm -hmm. Meet people. Yeah. yeah. Got, once I got my vehicle, sophomore year, so, you know, it helped. I'm not going to sit there and act like it was a terrible decision. It just didn't help me advance to where I wanted to be. Exactly. You know? Stay the course. Yeah. You got to stay focused. Money's coming. That's what people always told me. The money's coming. I like money come money go but yeah. you do gotta <laughs> like it, it'll be gotta get it. mm -hmm. uh all right so like in college what type of stories were you trying to tell if any stories like what it's because you say like uh i guess your story making progressed uh, so uh -huh. like what did it look like at the beginning it wasn't that it was a mess it was just an amalgamation of ideas Right, mm -hmm. so I'd be like, "Oh, let's tell this 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 vast elaborate story about this person, and they're dealing with this, and they got a girlfriend, and she got this, she gets pregnant. You know, it was, it was just like a bunch of stuff just happening. I see. You know, and you know, it's not about you're not able to do it. It's just that how are you doing it? You know, I'm one of those people. I don't like making just anything because you know your name is tied to that for sure. But um, sometimes it does just take you going into the lab and messing up. And I have a lot of lab experiments in that, right? I call it lab time. Excuse me, lab hours. Excuse me, sorry. When you get down with your friends, you get together, and y'all just make something. Or you find something to do with footage you got. Yeah. And you just put put it together however it fits. You know. I did a lot of that this year. Yeah, you have to do that. So, like now, what I like about the grad school program is, compared to when I was in undergrad, mm -hmm. you're always in the lab. It's intensive, so. So you have to get in there and experiment and like have other people come in and look at your work and say, hey, what do you think about this? Because if you don't, you ever seen them Tyler Perry shows? Sure, yeah. You seen that one with the, <laughs> that one movie he had where the woman killed a dude and he came back and the wigs was bad and it was weird and everybody was like, what the hell is this? Maybe, maybe, but keep going. It was one of the new ones, right? <laughs> That's what it's like when you don't have people like critiquing your stuff. <laughs> Now, it's not an attack on him. It's just like you need other people to put eyes on what it is you write and you read and you yeah, edit. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So back then, I didn't have people who really like had even the little bit of experience I had when I was in undergrad. So we'd be like putting stuff together. Oh, it looks good, Jakar. Yeah, it looks good. Call that like echo chambers. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. People keep telling you the same thing. Yeah. But you're not getting any better. Yeah. Yeah. Had a lot of that going on. Feel that. Yeah. That's what I said. I'd be asking people how they feel about bike tails like all the time. Like different mm -hmm. people like, how do, how do you, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about that? And even like I said, I was doing like kind of lab work like you and I just posted on Instagram without saying anything. Mm -hmm. Just try to see if I can get any type of feedback or criticism or yep. just like, how did this make you feel? Like, like to make sure like what I'm putting out is being received how I think it's supposed to be received. And if it's being received a different way, I'd like to know that too. Like Reception is funny nowadays. I look at it like if you get a large response back, whether it be good or bad, mm -hmm. depending on what bad is, of course. Um, that's a good thing. For sure. You know, if yeah. you get people talking about what it is you're doing <laughs> to discuss it and make it larger, like, that's a good thing. That's a great thing right that's now. It's a fantastic Engage, thing. Engagement, like you said, depending on how bad, you don't mm -hmm. want it to be. <laughs> yeah, it's certain, kind, it's certain kinds of bad. Mm -hmm. But um, I've seen stuff that I've been like, yo, this is dog. This is, this is trash. 
you know, in my opinion. And people love it. And those guys go off to get paid. So when I saw that, I began to, like, question it. And it, like, it, like, kind of poked in my brain. I had this dude back in my undergrad, his name was uh, Cortell Clark, Mr. Clark. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Mr. Clark. Um, he really, like, exposed me a lot to the arts as far as, like, film went. Because my professor, he wasn't going to do that. He just wasn't that type of guy. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Um, Keep going. But, yeah, dudes like that. Like Mr. Clark really like took me and exposed me to stuff, whether it'd been the, the, the theatrical arts, because theater transfers to film, not the other way around. And you know, theater's the only the oldest mode of like us telling stories as far as like for audiences. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the stuff I, I picked up on came from like being around the people in the theater and learning like the theater stuff. Cause I didn't do that in high school. Yeah. You know. But um when you look at stuff as art, it kinda helps you to stop being so judgmental about other people's art. For sure. Then you actually learn something from it, from mm -hmm. them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's what I love about like the subjectivity of art. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like whatever they put out came from somewhere, mm -hmm. right? So. Like, and you can take something from anybody. For sure, yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, that's why when when people like jump on Tyler Perry, like, oh, this is awful. This is garbage. This is trash. People are consuming his art and not yours. People want to see what he's putting out and not you. Yeah, you yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Like, work on yourself. So that's the kind of approach that I've taken with my own stuff. Like, there's too much work to be done to be sitting around talking about other people's stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely feel that. I feel that 100%. So, like, uh, yeah, what, what projects you got now? Or um, trying to make sure I'm not, not skipping ahead of anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, if you could talk about, I guess, the progression, how's been, in, how's being in New York, uh, mm -hmm. how has your, like you said in the beginning, how has your experiences in life, like, uh, guided you to making films or, yeah. Got you. Um, how are things changing over the years as far as you, the stories and films and all that stuff? All right. This, this is a good series of questions. I'm going to try to <laughs> just answer two of them. Yeah, no, that's good. Whatever you got. Uh, so, I guess I can pick up like 2020 during the pandemic. Okay. You know? Pandemic, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was trash. I got kicked out of school because, you know, we had to go home. Everybody was getting sick or whatever. So, I booked it back over here from, from New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And I worked that whole year. I got into the graduate program that I'm in right now at the City College of New York mm -hmm. up in Harlem. It's fun. Oh, yeah, it's great. Um, but I had to defer. So, I pushed that back a year. So, I worked all of 2020 into August of 21. Um, doing freelance work, you know, more or less videography, but it was all still storytelling. We did a lot of work with Houston Methodist. How'd you find that work? <clears throat> okay, that's a fun story. <laughs> so I was sitting around, I think it was May. No? What was that? Take it Late time. July, I think it was, okay. 2020. Yep. I had been, no, yeah. From, from uh, March to uh, August, it was about August, yeah. I've been sitting around I had no work, no money. And I was like, yo, I can't sit around here. I just got my diploma in the mail. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, I gotta get a job. I can't be here five months not doing anything. You know, my dad's still working, thank God. My mom was working. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm like, yo, let me go do something. So I get up and I go to Whataburger, the one over there in front of Target, Already, yeah. um, on 518, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. And I walk in, I'm like, hey, I'm looking for a job. It was paying nine something. The woman says, why you wanna work here? I said. Uh, because she was like, you got a degree. Like, what you what you want with this? I said, well, I want a job. I want to get some money. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, okay. Got my information. Um, got my uh, my paperwork together. She was like, okay, come in Monday. You're going to need these pants, these shoes, yada, yada. We'll give you this shirt. I'm like, okay, bet. I know that I've been going to this Whataburger, like, majority of my life. Yeah, yeah, 518 Whataburger, right? Yeah, there. I was like, dang. Okay. So, <laughs> I go back home. <laughs> to be on the other side. Yeah. yeah. I go back home, my dad was like, you know, that's, that's good. You was you out here trying to find something, but you ain't get that degree to go flip burgers. And I was like, you're right. I ain't flipping no burgers. <laughs> so I think it was that same night. Shout out to all the burger flippers. We shout out to the burger flippers, you know what I'm saying? Because they, they get my food right over there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I always have. But, um, you know. Staying I focus, intentional. Absolutely, so. had to. Because yeah. I go home, I think it was that same night or that week. I'm applying to like jobs. I think I applied to like 14 jobs in a day or something like that. Nothing, of course. 
Then this one pops up at midnight. I'm finna roll over and go to bed. Mm-hmm. Dude says he needs a, uh, a camera PA. I've been praying about that. I said, that's what I need. That's what I want to do. Yeah. So I apply to it. I wake up the next morning. He gives me a call or a text. No, he gives me a call. That's what it was. And he was like, hey, uh, come out to my house. We'll do a, a formal interview or whatever. Okay. Okay, cool. It's in spring. I'm like, dang, that's a drive. <laughs> that so is a drive. <laughs> the other side of the world. Yeah. So I book it that hour, hour 15 up there. And um, things just fell in place. He was like, I had like 40 applicants. Yours is the best one. I was like, really? He was like, yeah. And uh, I worked with him ever since. What made yours stand out to him? Hmm? What made yours stand out to him? Um, the level of experience. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of crew experience in New Orleans. I didn't have a lot of storytelling experience. I had a lot of crew. Mm-hmm. Like from interning on movies like Tales from the Hood 2, um, other very small projects. Like I've been, I've done the PA thing. I've done the grip thing, you know. Um, I did work as a grip down here in Houston on this TV show. It's called the uh, Fifth Ward TV series. Okay. It's on UMC. Okay. Break, yeah. break down the grip and PA. Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. I always do that. No, it's okay. So grip is the person who handles like all the equipment, the heavy stuff, lights, usually the stands and stuff like that. Um, PM, you know, production assistant. You do anything they tell you to do. So I had lots of running around, you know, like with my head cut off experience, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. lots of handling equipment, moving stuff around, you know, basic stuff. And I hate that that's what I learned in college in a way, but I'm blessed because that put me in these various positions to get to where I'm at now. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like this gradual step ladder. So um, I worked with him um, all of, yeah, that was like a year, August to August. Mm-hmm. Saved up my money and then um, I decided to book it to New York because I couldn't learn how to tell stories here. Couldn't learn how to make movies here. That's yeah. that's more or less video production we were doing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Client calls, you go fulfill the need, you do what you do, and you go home at the end of the day. Yeah. You what know? your goal is movies. I want to direct. Yes, direct. Sir. All right. There we go. We're gonna take a brief little pause. We're back with your card. Uh, so <laughs> your intentions are to be a director. That's that's where that's where we're going with this. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So. I shot my thesis, my graduate thesis, this past September, mm-hmm. and um, it was fire. It was a good time. <laughs> yeah. um, putting that story together was a trip. So had a breakup this year. It's a breakup story. I was like, okay. Prior to that, I had this like stump, this creative stump. Mm-hmm. I was trying to put these different ideas together, and um, stuff just wasn't clicking. Like it was too big, it was too wild, or it was too short, <clears throat> and I was like, okay. I don't know what to make. So all that happens, I find myself single. And then I'm like, dang. I just sit down one night and I just started writing. I'm like, I gotta get this this feeling up off of me. Yeah. Cause like, I'm not a depressive person. I don't like feeling sad. Of course. So I have to express myself. I've always had to do that. And um, I just got to writing and something started clicking. I sent it to my classmates. They were like, oh, this is this is good. This is, this is something you can work with. I was like, all right, bet. And um, lo and behold, it comes together, 12, 13, 14 pages. And, um, is that like an outline or is that like a yeah, that was script, script. Okay. the actual script? So I had done like lots of character work and like during the writing process, getting different notes about what I needed to do. And, um, you know, time getting to, getting to crunch a little bit and um, I had to work a little bit harder on it. So I spent the whole summer working, saving up. Um, most of the film was funded with my money. Oh, all that money I spent. <sighs> on your thesis. For yes. Sure. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, you got you got to do it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to really show you like like whether or not you really want to do this, whether you, whether or not you're ready to do this. If you want to spend all the money you got on it to invest, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see what we got going on. Here. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Use what we got and get what we can. You yeah. got to do what you got to do. I love the setup once again. Thank you. Um, I seen the plate. <laughs> they ain't seen the plate with the pie on it. They not they not seeing the plate. How about feel plate? <laughs> Like that mug. You see the shirt. Four D branding napkins. master. Oh my gosh! Shout out to my uh, my merchandise person, uh, Precious Prince. You're on your job, man. But um, yeah. Hmm. This is good. So I took all that. Bye, everybody to Galveston. We shot in four days. It's about this couple struggling to identify the issues in their relationship and realizing that you know it's falling apart. Yeah. It's not always bad. No, it's life. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of us we don't have a lot of stories where that happens to black people. Let's just be honest. That's why I told the story the way I did. Okay. 
Because, you know, we ain't got to have awful things happen to each other all the time. Sometimes life is just simple, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure. A lot of the times life is just simple, you know? Yeah, it's not tr- so traumatic. No, yeah. Not all the time. Like, life is dramatic, but it's not like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> you know? She died. I was like, nah, like, mm-hmm. let me just tell this how I'm feeling it. And, um, you know, of course, you got to change stuff up. I, mean, I wouldn't tell you exactly what happened. Yeah. But um, it was just... Expressive, you know, that's what I liked about this movie. It felt really like an expression more so than anything I'd ever made thus far, you know, with your newfound, you know, story making skills and all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. it's like a combination of all your years of hard work, yeah. Like, I was sitting down and I was like putting together like the visual elements of it. I had my boy Karthik, shouts out to Karthik Tharmaya. Mm-hmm. Um, he came through, shot it. He and I have been working together since we were like 15, 14. Yep, yeah, he shot it for me, DP. He did an excellent job. But I had. I'm um, still putting it together. Second rough draft right now. And um, I'm proud of it. You know. Thanks. I'm, re- I'm ready for the world to see it. We got a, a showing in June in New York. Okay. So that's when we have like our school's film festival. Mm-hmm. And then I'll put it in a series of other festivals as well. Nice. The name of the film is Transparency. Play on words P A R E N S E A. Transparency, like the C. Yeah. Follow <laughs> it on IG. Transparency Official. You know? Okay, okay. Nice. So, yeah. It's got its own IG page. Uh, how, what, what made you do that? Oh, man, it's a, it's a game out here you got to play, man. Okay. You got to make sure your stuff is out here. You know, I'm putting all this marketing stuff together. I don't know anything about marketing, for real. Oh. <laughs> yeah, me, uh, me neither. <laughs> I mean, you, you're doing a better job than me. Look at the... <laughs> Did you see the napkins, too? <laughs> Did you see the napkins? I didn't wipe my mouth with it because I like it. Look. Yeah, I'm trying not to. <laughs> yeah, like, the napkins, like, excellent marketing, Brandon. But yeah, you gotta have that kind of push for your films, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, people don't know just how much and how long you have to push a project. Like, look at how long. Um, who was that? It was somebody. I was just looking at. They were talking about how um, how long they had to push their songs for. Like pushing films and pushing music are very similar in that you have to keep pushing the project. Yeah, it's a very saturated like market, both of those. So mm-hmm. it's like people just making anything and can't make anything at any time. So if you want your stuff to stand out, you gotta keep putting it in people's face. Like yeah. Yeah. So I'm prepared to do that. I, it's going to get on my nerves. I'm not going to lie. I'm posting that every day for the next year, but I'm going to end up doing it when the project's done. Definitely have to. You know who helped me with that? Uh, Tyler the Creator said. Uh, that was who said it. Yes, that was who said it. He be saying good stuff. He was like, man, you put the, all this energy, you pick out, you picked out every part of this like film or project or whatever you did, and then you post it one time on Instagram, and then that's it. Yeah, he said that. I was, <laughs> I was like, like, yeah, yeah, I do be putting a lot of thought and energy into these projects. I heard Only that. to post it like one time. Exactly. Nah, you gotta keep. People gotta keep seeing this, man. You have and, to. And you, you owe it to yourself. You and know how often I see pie tails? How often? At least two to three times a week. Yeah, yeah. And I be putting it out every day, so that algorithm we're working against that algorithm. Exactly. Yeah. The algorithm is something else. But I was thinking about that. I was like, I couldn't imagine posting my project every day. Then I sat down and I thought about all those nights that I was writing this thing to like eleven and twelve and one and two, and I was like. That time got to come back to me some kind of way. <laughs> y'all going to see this. Yeah, y'all got to, I got to reap some of these benefits. This is going to get cycled, circulated, all that stuff. It's got to get distributed. You're going to see it. Like, mm-hmm. So that's why you got that IG. Say it one more time for yeah. the folks. Transparency Official. Transparent S-E-A. Official. Okay. It'll be in the description and in the video if I can put it right there. All that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then, what, so... It's your first time on Pie Tales, right? You should uh, come back. But uh, when you come back, where, where would you like to... You want to be a director. So what's it going to take to get there? Where do you see yourself? I think that's what I'm trying to ask. Um, <laughs> so... Um, what's the next move? For sure, for sure. There's this cat mentor of mine, more or less, for sure. Um, his name is uh, Edward Buckles. Okay. Um, he uh, talks to me a lot. Uh, I asked him. He just did a film for HBO. It's called Katrina Babies. Katrina Babies. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw that. If you heard yeah, of it. Definitely heard of it. Yeah. So um, he was telling me not long ago. I sat down with him. I was like, yo, like, what do I need to do to direct? He was like, bro, you need to direct. You, know, you need to get up and just make stuff. It doesn't matter. So for anybody else that wants to be a director, direct. <laughs> get up and make now. projects. And, um, you know, when we talk about directing and direction, like, yeah, you're a storyteller. It helps to know what, what story you're telling. Mm-hmm. Like it helps a lot. And it helps to understand um, the things that came before directing, whether it be playwriting and play directing, in my opinion. Not to say you direct a movie like a play, you don't. 
but like understanding like all the stuff that came beforehand. Like films are relatively new compared to like the art of theater. You know what I'm saying? But it all it's all still captivating. Yeah. So, you know, knowing your story, because it all comes down to story. Like all the cameras don't matter. All the equipment does not matter. You can shoot a movie on like a Panasonic GH5 now, which used to be a beast in 2016. Now it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like the movie can be sick if the story is like there, and that's the biggest thing right now. It's like I just want to tell the stories. So, if you really want to direct, if you really want to make stuff, you just gotta make stuff. There's this cat. Um, he's uh, younger than me. He's still an undergrad back at Dillard. His name is Promise. Um, him and uh, my my dude St. Charles. So. They worked behind me, like um, year they were St. Charles like a year behind. Other dudes like two years, I think. Okay. And um, we worked often, and um, you know they just made stuff. Once I got out of there, they just kept making and making and making and making. So like the volume of the work is what matters in a way, but you know it matters when people see the progression of the storytelling. Because if you can tell me a story and it sucks, and then five projects later, I'm involved with the neck with the new ones. Like oh okay. The growth, the understanding, like yeah, people appreciate that. Yeah, people yeah. work hard. Yeah. So I just want to make, 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 make. Um, I got two more projects I'm slated to shoot. Um, I have one that I'm developing right now, um, editing transparency, and then um, you know a couple ideas I'm writing out. But like that's the cycle. Like I just try to like always have something in the oven. For sure. You know. So yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. Um, you know, I'm going to leave the cameras up. We're probably going to keep talking. So <laughs> if anything else comes up, we turn that camera back on. But uh, for now, this has been Pie Tales. i got Jakari. Thank y'all for tuning in. And uh, yeah, we out. All right, peace, y'all. Cut the tape, That was the intro. Yeah. This is history.